But let me tell you that our beloved Father, the man of God, the visionary, and the convener of Global Crusade, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, is here. You are welcome, sir. Everybody praise the Lord. If you are here for Lucy him and let him go, I said praise the Lord. He has loosed you already. I just came to inform you and to tell you that all yokes in your life, they are broken tonight. And those online, thank you for joining. Because today, the very first day, and every chain, every shackle, all the dominion of the devil in your life, broke it tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we adore you. We glorify you. We honor you because you sent your only begotten son to lose us and let us go free. Lord, we acknowledge you. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. And I pray everyone here tonight, a boy, girl, man, woman, elderly, younger, I pray the power of the Lord for total deliverance will come to your life in Jesus' name. Confirm it to Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm coming to John chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 41. John chapter 11. Reading from verse 41. Then... They took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. The Father has heard the prayer and the intercession of Christ concerning you tonight. In verse 42, it says in verse 42, And I knew that thou hearest me always, always, always. I need to remind you that right now Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And is making intercession for you. And Jesus said, Father, whether those years gone by or at the present time, as I'm making intercession for everyone there, I thank you that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 43. In verse 43, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. What's your name? Shout your name and put your name in the mouth of Jesus. Lazarus, come forth. Then in verse 44, verse 44 says, And he that was dead, was dead, not is dead, when Christ comes to you, and when Christ speaks to you, and when he touches your life tonight, everything dead in your life will come alive. And he that was dead came forth, bound hands and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Jesus saith unto them, Lose him and let him go. By the time we finished, the commandment he has given to his servant that says, Lose him and let him go. That commandment will be fulfilled in your life. 
Tonight, I'm talking to you on those words of Jesus. Go. Let him go free. Let him go forward. Let him go further. Let him go further. Lose him and let him go free. Lose him and let him go up. You are going up. When the Lord loses you tonight, when the Lord breaks every yoke tonight, you go forth, you go further, you go free, you go forward. Progress in your life. Dominion in your life. Liberation total in your life tonight in Jesus' name. There are three things I'm looking at. Number one. Number one, freedom from the bondage of corruption. You see that Lazarus was already stinking. Corruption was setting in. And when Jesus got there, he got him out of that corruption. Number one is freedom from the bondage of corruption. Number two is bondage is a freedom from the bondage of captivity. They put him inside the grave. And he put his stone there, and it's like you are there, you are there forever. But then, that captivity of the grave, that captivity of being, stone, uh, being overwhelmed with the stone there, the Lord broke that bondage. And your life tonight, the breaking of every bondage has come in Jesus' name. Number two is freedom from the bondage of captivity. And then number three is freedom into. You come out so you can go in. You come out of corruption. Come out of captivity. Come out of the grave so that you can come into the blessing of of the new creation. Number three then is freedom into the blessings of the new creation. Come to number one. Number one, freedom from the bondage of corruption. Bondage of corruption. It says in verse 39 of chapter 11 of John, it said, Jesus said, take here away the stone. You have to do your part. There's the human part. There is the sinner's part. There is the believer's part. You believe that Christ has come. And you believe it's going to break every yoke in your life. There is a part you play. And he told them, take here away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, says unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead for days. He stinketh. That's the stage of corruption. That is the position of corruption. He was dead, and now he stinketh, because he had been dead for days. I want to remind you, the Bible says that the sinner is dead in sin and transgression. And he's been dead now, not only four days or four weeks or four months or four years. in has been dead in sin for years. And because of that, there's corruption. And tonight, the Lord has come to set you free from the bondage of corruption. And then in verse 40, in verse 40, Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Everyone who believes tonight will see the glory of God. Will see the power of God. Will see the deliverance of God. Everyone who believes tonight we see the salvation of God. Give me a good, good day. Amen. Look at Psalm 14. Psalm 14. 
And I'm reading from verse 1, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said, in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They are corrupt. The people who say, there is no God, they're corrupt. The people who live as if there were no God, they're corrupt. The people who act, the people who behave as if God does not see them, as if God is not going to require of them what they do. The people who walk in the day, in the night, they talk, they think, they act, they behave as if there were no God, they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Let me talk to you because it says that we can have freedom from the bondage of corruption. Bondage of corruption. Now, why do people have corruption in their lives, in their hands, in their behavior, in their action? Why do people practice corruption in the day and in the night when they're alone and when they are with other people? Understand, corruption will lead to condemnation. Condemnation will lead to damnation if nothing is done. If you are not free from corruption, eventually condemnation will come. And eventually from condemnation, you pass on to damnation. Now, tell me, how do people get into corruption? Why is there corruption? We need to know so that you will know what the Lord is saving you from. Number one, Jesus said, they will not come to him because they love darkness rather than light. When somebody loves darkness and he loves the works of darkness and he loves what he does in the dark, thinking that God will not see, God will not know, that man, that woman is corrupt. Number two, why do people have corruption? Number one is the love of darkness. Number two is the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. They love so money so much, they can destroy, they can kill, they can steal. They can do evil, they can deceive, they can use uh, technical methods, they can use physical methods, they can use, uh, you know, well-known methods, they can steal because of the love of money. And anyone that has love of darkness and love of money, he has corruption. The love of flesh. You see, flesh wants to be pampered. Flesh wants to have illegal, illicit, adulterous enjoyment. And because of the love of the flesh, that's why they become corrupt. The love of the flesh brings corruption upon people. Think about yourself. You have flesh. And when you love your flesh more than the commandment of God, when you love your flesh more than the calling of God, when you love your flesh, that illicit enjoyment, that brings corruption into your life. There is the love of pornography. Pornography is connected with the love of the flesh. And when you love that, you, you kind of uh, uh, block your ears from the warning that comes from on high. In the night, you are browsing that thing, uh, and you are going through that thing because there's a love for pornography. You do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not love his, uh, his commandment. You do not love uh, his sacrifice and what he did on the cross of Calvary. All you can think about is pornography. Pornography, those dirty, dirty things you are looking at. You enjoy that more than you enjoy the grace of God. What 
causes corruption that the love of the world, the love of the world, because the word of God says that the love of the world, the pride of life, and the pride of, uh, you know, whatever, and the lust of your flesh, they are not of God, but they are of the world. And he says, if anyone, any man, if anyone, any woman, if anyone, a religious man, a religious woman, if he lost the world, there's no love of God in him. And so, that, that, those are the things that cause the corruption. But the Lord comes to deliver you tonight. I said the Lord came to deliver you tonight. And there is the love of self. The love of self. You love yourself so much that even if you are trampling on other people, you enjoy that because that pleases you. If you're stealing from other people, you love that because that pleases you. If you make other people sad, other people sorrowful, and if you kind of take their right from them, you enjoy that because you're all for self. You're not for Christ. You're not for his word. You're not for heaven. You're all for self. It's the love of self. All those things, they make a person corrupt. And the Lord is saying, lose him and let him go tonight. He will lose you from everything. If you set you free from all the works of the flesh, in Jesus' name. Number one is freedom from the bondage of corruption. What are you bound to? What causes corruption in your life? Is it the love of darkness? Is it the love of money? Is it the love of the flesh? Is it the love of pornography? Is it the love of sale? Whatever it is, you surrender to the Lord tonight. And you say, Lord, I'm so sorry that I've allowed the love of the flesh, the love of money, the love of pornography, the love of the flesh, the love of the world, and the love of self to take me away from you. You call yourself a Christian, good name, bad character. You call yourself a Christian, good name, but bad behavior because of the corruption and now four days or four months or four years or 40 years or 50 years or 60 years or 70 years you've been there bound and you've been there in that cage and in that grave and Jesus said take here away the stone and as you take away the stone and you call upon the Lord tonight it will forgive you. It will change your life. And all those things of corruption, everything will be wiped out of your life in Jesus' name. I'm coming to number two here. Number two says we have freedom from the bondage of captivity. Freedom from the bondage of Captivity. What's captivity? Many people will say a person is in, ca in captivity when uh, an enemy captures him uh, and takes him to a strange land. Well, that's the normal, regular definition. But what is captivity? I'm coming to Job uh, chapter 42. And I'm reading from verse 10. Job chapter 42. And we're looking at a verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. You say, Pastor, I've heard the story of Job, and I didn't hear that a strange king, a foreign king, came to the home of Job and then took him to a strange land in captivity. Yes, you are right. What did Job have?
have that God called captivity, sickness, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. The man was sick. He had pain. He had played. He was rolling on the ground of ashes. He cried. He complained. He couldn't sleep in the night. He couldn't sleep during the day. And then uh, captivity, he couldn't go to work. Captive. He couldn't go visit. Captive. He couldn't go shopping. Captive. He couldn't uh, go to relate or attend to anything uh, outside that bed of affliction. That's captivity. And then we're told that God, a gracious God, God, a merciful God, he turned the captivity of the sickness of Job. He became well. I thought you say amen over there. <laughs> captivity of sickness, captivity of disease, captivity of just staying on the bed, crying, having pain, having plague. All that captivity tonight is broken in Jesus' name. I understand, I understand. Since that woman had cancer, she couldn't go to all the places she used to go. Captivity, I understand. Since that person had diabetes and he'd be urinating, urinating all the time, he could never go to again to where he used to go. Captivity, I understand. Since that person had blindness, he couldn't drive as he used to drive. He couldn't move freely as he used to move freely. Captivity of blindness. I understand. See, that person became dead. He couldn't be self-reliant. You see, what did he say? What's he talking about? Because of the deafness is captivity. It limits us. Disease limits us. Sickness limits us. And then Christ has come. So that all our captivity, all our sicknesses, everything healed tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power, can I tell you that the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all involved with our freedom and our healing, God is on your side. Christ is on your side. And the Holy Ghost is on your side. Every captivity of sickness destroyed and broken from your life tonight in Jesus' name. How God who has not changed, how God who healed in the Old Testament, how God, the one that created the whole universe, the same forever, how God anointed Jesus the Jesus who has not changed. The same yesterday and today and forever. The eternal one. The almighty one. And the one that comes to break every yoke in your life. How God, unchanging God, anointed Jesus, unlimited Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost because he is God. He has not changed from the time of creation to the time of redemption and to the present time of dispensation. He has not changed and because he has not changed, his power remains the same. The captivity of sickness in your life broken tonight in Jesus' name. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost, and with power, 
our power. Anywhere we mention the name of God, El Shaddai, there is power there. Anytime we mention the name of God, Elohim, there is power there. Anytime we mention the name of God, Jehovah, Jehovah, our banner, Jehovah, our strength, the Jehovah Shammah, who is always there. Anytime we mention the name of God, Jehovah, there is power there. Amen. And anytime, anywhere, we mention the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, our killer, by his stripes, we're killed. Anytime we mention the name of Jesus, there's power there. There's power here tonight to break your yoke. There's power here tonight to destroy all the works of the devil in your life in Jesus' name. Anytime we mention the Holy Ghost, there's power there. The power to save, the power to heal, the power to destroy everything the devil has orchestrated in your life. Power, power, power here tonight. It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. What was he doing? That means healing is good. Sickness is bad. I said healing is good. And God is good. How do we know God is good? He brings the goodness of healing unto us. And I say tonight, God is good. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time, anytime you are sick, God is good. And all the time, God is good. Because every time we pray, every time we call on him, the goodness of healing, the goodness of redemption, the goodness of deliverance comes upon every one of us now. A man is standing there and he professes to be good. And you come to him, you line up. He gives that one hundred dollars. The next person comes, he gives that one a hundred dollars, and you are happy, you are saying, I'm on the queue. And when I get to him, He'll give me a hundred dollars because it's just a good man, a generous man. And now you get to him and he looks at you and he says, go on. I'm not going to give you. Is he totally good? No, but God is different. This one comes, he opens his blind eyes. And the man goes on rejoicing, God is good, God is good. This one comes and he stops his deaf ears and he keeps on rejoicing, God is good. And you come, one leg is shorter than the other. And will he say, go outside, I don't want to be good to you. Will he say that? No. He is good all the time to all the people that come to him through Jesus Christ. That's why we can serve him. Because we know he is not partial. He does not make discrimination. Our God is good. And tonight, he will do good in your life in Jesus' name. He went about doing good and healing. And healing. You have Bible there. And healing. Who is exempted from all? Who is subtracted from all? Everyone is there. Thank God you are there. Thank God he has seen you tonight. Thank God he's going to lose you and let you go free. 
free from sin, free from sickness, free from satanic bondage, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of who? Oppressed of who? Uh, you know, the people, uh, well, can I blame them? I went to school and I learned that subject. And when I came out from school, I met quite a lot of people. And I say 17 plus 4, and they said 23. Don't blame them. They didn't go to the school I went to. There are many people who have not come to the school of the Bible. Any bad thing that happens when they get cancer, oh, they say is the blessing of God in disguise. When they get blindness, they say is the blessing of God in disguise. And when they get uh, whatever accident, they say is the blessing of God in disguise. Now, they don't understand there is a devil that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And they attribute everything to God. They say it's an act of God. Are you sick? They say it's an act of God. Are you hospitalized? They say it's an act of God. Your sickness is not an act of God. It's the oppression of the devil. You didn't eat cancer anymore. I said your sickness is not an act of God. It's an oppression of the devil. And God and the devil, they don't do the same work. They don't go the same direction. And if the devil has brought oppression, captivity, sickness, disease in your life, Christ came to destroy all the works of the devil. And he'll destroy that thing from your life tonight. He'll break that yoke out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. For God was with him. God was with him. God the Father was with the Son, Jesus Christ. Is God still with Christ? Is Christ still with God? He sees on the right hand of majesty on high. And every time, and that's all time, every time, all time, every time, any time, God is with Christ, your healing must take place. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth of the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Welcome to your deliverance tonight. Welcome to your healing tonight. Welcome to the power that breaks every yoke out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one is freedom from the bondage of corruption. He will set you free. Number two is freedom from the bondage of captivity. He'll break every yoke, every captivity out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at number three here is freedom into the blessings of the new creation. Freedom into the blessings of the new creation in John chapter 11. And here I am reading from verse 44. And he that was dead came forth. To start with, life will replace death in your life. Resurrection power will uh, replace all that ruinous power of the devil out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. He that was dead. He that was sick, he that was oppressed, came forth. You are coming for tonight. It's unto you according to your faith. You are coming for tonight in Jesus' name. Bound, hand, 
and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with napkin. Now, the man was now living. He has come out of the grave of corruption. He has come out of the grave of that captivity. But watch if the grave clothes were still there. What if the face was still bound with a napkin? What if, although he is now risen or come out of death, yet the bondages were still there? You know, there are people that say, I'm saved. Praise the Lord. You are pass from death unto life. But if you're still bound with some habits, if you're still bound and your face is, uh, uh, there's a bandage that covers your side and you cannot see. And you're still bound with all those uh, kinds of behaviors. How far can you go in life? That's why you come today and Jesus said unto them, Lucy, him and let him go. Where is he? Lucy. him. Where are you? Lucy. him. And let him go. Everything uh, that bound you in the past, you are loose tonight. Yeah. Every yoke that clamped you down in the past, you are loose tonight. Yeah. Everything that stopped you to go to a high level and to be an achiever, everything uh, that stopped you before today, he loses you and lets you go. Today, as we yield to the Lord, today, as we surrender to the Lord, you are going to become unstoppable. I'm talking to my daughter there. I said you'll become unstoppable. I'm talking to my son there. I said you'll become unstoppable. Everything, every plant, the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. They are uprooted tonight. Sin, everything, you'll be forgiven tonight. Sickness, every kind of sickness, you're healed tonight. Bondage, every kind of bondage, you're loose tonight in Jesus' name. Your life will become new. Your character will become new. Your strength will become new. Your vitality will become new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, what it means is you are outside. Anyone outside, is powerless, is visionless, is in captivity, is in corruption. And you understand, it's not the corruption that you engineer yourself. When Lazarus was put in that grave, he didn't manufacture the corruption just by the fact that he was separated from uh, humanity. And in the grave, corruption came naturally. No, that's how it, ha it happens. There we are without Christ. There we are outside Christ. There we are in the grave of the world. There we are a mere society in the world. And corruption comes, whether we like it or not. But when you come to Christ tonight, he will set you free. It says, therefore, if any man be Christ, any man, any man, he might have been in that corruption for four days or four weeks or four years or 40 years or 70, 80 years. Any man, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Give me a good amen. Your life will become new. Your brain will become new. Your thinking will become new. Your plans will become new. And your progress will become new. The kind of progress you never had in your life tonight is beginning tonight. 
are the kind of energy, the kind of strength you never had before. It's beginning tonight in Jesus' name. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Give me an amen there. Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth just by hearing the voice of Christ, the life giver. And the sickness that killed him and sent him to the grave instantaneously passed away. And the pain he had before he died instantaneously it vanished away. And the sorrow and the suffering and the sighing and the crying he had before, everything passed away. The moment you hear the voice of Christ and you respond to the voice of Christ and say, Lord, here I am. Old sorrow, old suffering, old sin, old crying, old weeping, old regrets, everything will pass away. And then it says, behold, look at him. Anybody could have, in fact, in fact, that's what they did. Many people heard that Lazarus rose from the dead. And they became, and they, they just wanted to see him. They wanted to behold him. And everyone that came, some tried to touch him. Some tried to handle him. Some tried to pinch him. Some tried to speak to him. They all discovered all things I become new. Joy entered into the house. Joy replaced sorrow. All things became new. Even the voice of Martha and the voice of Mary, everything changed. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, Lazarus came forth and even their voices changed. Their voices became new. The voice of joy in your life and the voice of testimony in your life in Jesus name where there was sorrow where there was suffering where there was sin where there was poverty where there was regret now for you everything is going to turn around tonight behold behold I'm looking at you because he said, Behold, behold, I look at your life because he said, Behold, behold, I look at your situation and I declare all things have become new. Who is that for? I said, Who is that for? For you, for everyone, just by taking away the stone. That's the stone of permanent bondage. It's gone. It's gone. It can never revive or be resuscitated again. Put a stone. Now, remove that stone. Your life has not ended. Remove that stone. That sickness will not continue. Remove that stone. That sin, bad behavior will not continue your life. New life has come. What are you? New life has come. What are you? New deliverance has come. And the Lord will effect it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. First, he'll set you free from corruption. Two, he'll set you free from captivity. And then three, he'll bring you into the blessing of the new creation. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to get away every form of corruption, every form of sin out of your life. I rejoice with you. He will forgive you tonight. I rejoice with you. He'll give you freedom, total freedom from sin tonight in Jesus' name. And what you didn't have power to overcome, 
the Lord will come in. Just open your heart. The Lord will come in uh, and he'll bring the power for victory. The power of freedom. And the power to be set free from every sin it bring to your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to come out of this bondage of corruption. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Amen. God bless you there. Amen. Amen. Just raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. You want to be free from the bondage of corruption, the corruption of the love of darkness, corruption of the love of money, corruption of the love of fleshly things, adultery, fornication, pornography, the bondage and the corruption of pornography. You want to be free, the corruption of self, love of self. You want to be free, he is here to set you free. Raise up that hand and you're telling the Lord, I know you are the only one that can set me free from corruption. And here I come. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. Freedom has come. Freedom has come. Identify yourself before the Lord. I want this freedom. Freedom from corruption. Freedom from sin. Freedom from evil. The love of evil. You want uh, uh, people that just love evil. And they dive into that. Tell the Lord, I'm free tonight. I come tonight. I receive you as my savior. As my redeemer. I turn away from the love of evil. The love of sin. I turn away and I come uh, to receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. Then you'll come in. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. And then I'll sup with him and fellowship with him. I'll take the old things away. And then all things will become new in your life just by the presence of Christ in your heart. Receive him. Receive him. Lord, I abandon the old ways. Abandon my sin. I abandon my evil. I abandon my pornography. I abandon my love of money, the root of all evil, and I come to you now. Save me, forgive me, set me free. Make me a new creature in Christ. He has answered your prayer. I said he has answered your prayer. Keep on standing, keep on standing, and lifting up that hand. Those who are here at the Alpha location are in different congregations in the continent, every continent, and those online. Uh, keep on standing and raising up your hand there. The Lord, in a word, is going to set you free right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that has been given that saves everyone that calls on him. I pray, forgive all your people there tonight in Jesus' name. Search everyone free from the bondage of corruption. Set everyone free from the cord and the chain and the shackles of their sin. Lord, I pray, loose them. Let them go free. Forgiveness, freedom, joy of salvation, power for victory. Give everyone now in Jesus' name. Bring new life, new creation, new behavior, and new forthrightness to every life in Jesus' name. Give everyone power to say no to sin 
and say yes to righteousness. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. That work of redemption, salvation has been done. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you there and uh, they'll ask for your name and ask some details so that we can keep on helping you in this new life of the new creation. And we'll call on our overseer to help us at this time uh, so that when this is done, I'll come back. Your sickness will not remain in your body tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Those of you up there, where you are standing, please, the counselors are reaching you right now. They are coming to you in order to help you. You've responded to this wonderful message. The man of God has revealed from the scriptures on how to get into this blessed life of reconciliation with the Lord. So that's the decision you have just taken. Give your details to the counselors. Please, your correct name and your correct address and your phone number. Give them the name by which you are called in the place where you live the description by which they can get to you, probably the place where you live has no residential address, but you can describe it by a particular landmark. Maybe it's a story building, the name, and you are behind. Please give all those details in order to help you in your new found faith. It's a good decision, a blessed decision you have made tonight that will lead you on in your new walk and your found faith in Christ. If you are watching online and you've given your life to Christ, after the pastor's message is night, there is a link, gckhq.org, Stroke Connect, below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Do that. It will help you and the Lord will bless you. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, but you just gave your life to Christ. Send your name, please. Phone number and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this phone number plus 234 I go over that WhatsApp number again, plus 234-915-444-9263. I also want to inform you that there will be a special meeting, Lunch Hour with Jesus tomorrow. For those of you here at the Alpha location that have responded to this altar call tonight, and the meeting will be taking place here at the Crusade Ground, at the extreme of my right hand, far extreme, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Do well to be there. The Lord will bless you, and you'll have a testimony. In addition to that, I also want to inform you that there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 5th November 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. The convener of the global crusade, the man of God you have just listened to tonight, 
We'll be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thank you and God bless you. Benin Believers Banquet comes up on Sunday, 5th November 2023 at Deep Alive Bible Church Headquarters, 153 Ekewa Road here in Benin. Time, 3 p.m. Counselors, please, let's quickly attend to all these our friends who have responded tonight to this altar call. Let's help them get their details. Please make sure the information they are giving you is correct. We need to help them. We need to go to them to show them the way so they will be blessed by the Lord. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that, please, to the far back. Let's do that. To my left-hand side, there are many people standing at the entrance. Please, let's go to them. To the right-hand side as well. Let's ensure that we reach all the people. And even in the language class at the far back, Let's ensure we reach them. Nobody should be left out. Let's do that quickly. As the man of God is ready to come back, but let's do this and ensure that we are thorough. God bless you. And let's make sure that we reach everyone. Everyone. And please, if nobody had come to you, please just uh, raise up your hand. The counselors will locate you very quickly. Just raise your hand and wave to them. The counselors will come to you. There are so many persons at the far back. Counselors, please go to them. And the rest of you seated, begin to ask the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Your very heart's desire, your request. That's why you are here. There will be an explosion tonight. Explosion of miracle. The Lord will reach down to you. In a wonderful way, you'll have a testimony. Pray. Counsel us, let's be fast. Let's also be thorough. Let's make sure we reach all the people. And get that settled before the man of God comes up. We are here for great, great wonders tonight. Blessings untold, mighty miracles, wonders from heaven. If you have finished giving your details to the counselors, please sit down. Let's all sit down. The buses are there. They'll take you home. Don't be in a hurry. The program is not over yet. The man of God is coming back to give the blessing, the prayer that will unlock every door. Counsel us if we are true. Please supervise us. Just wave the flag to me so I'll know you are true. To my left hand, thank you very much. Thank you. Far back, if you are true, please wave the flag. Just wave the flag. Thank you very much. Middle row. Just wave the flag. 
If you are true, please wave the flag. Let me see you. Thank you. To the right can. Supervisors, are we through there? Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. The Lord will touch you. New things in your life. The Lord will do it. That's why you are here. The man of God has said it. New life. New, ex new experience. New blessing. A turn around. God will visit you. Every evil thing will be taken away. The Lord will give you a new life, new testimony to his own praise and glory. Counselors, God bless you. Thank you very much. To the right, are we true? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we all rise up now. As the man of God comes to shower the blessings. Praise the Lord. Your freedom has come. Freedom from the captivity of sickness. From the bondage of disease. And everything that is not of God on your body, everything is clearing away right now. Your blind eyes will see.